All right, John Morgan with the Pennsylvania Progressive. I'm here speaking today with Mark Rossi, who's running for the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. Uh, tell us some about your background, uh, some about the district, the seat. Uh, this was Dante Santoni Jr.'s seat, and he's retiring. Uh, my name is Mark Rossi. I am the candidate for the 126th State House. Uh, I was born and raised in Temple, Pennsylvania. Uh, I graduated from Muhlenberg High School. I also graduated from Kutztown University with my BA in Political Science. Uh, after I graduated from college, uh, my father wanted, wanted his first graduated son to come back and work in the family business, uh, which is Rossi Brothers Window and Door Company. Uh, which has been located in Reading since 1969. Um, and of course, I was proud to come back and work with my father. And, and it was probably one of the best moves I ever did because uh, unfortunately, a couple years after I came back, he passed away and uh, I took over uh, the company as president and I'm currently running that right up to this point. Um, but I have a true love and, and passion for politics and simply doing the right thing for the right people. Uh, I'm tired of watching these politicians take advantage of the middle class and seniors, and I just want to be the voice of the people. You know, I'm, I see so much, so many things out there that are, are simply wrong, and we are being left behind. And uh, when I mean when I'm going to stand up for the people, I, I promise you, I will come out and and be the voice of everybody in our district. Did anything in particular really motivate you to make the decision to do this? Because you basically kind of came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, you, you're running a very, very strong campaign. No, actually, uh, this is what I always wanted to do my entire life. Um, even going in when I graduated from college, uh, this is something I always wanted to do. Unfortunately, I had some instances that happened in my life as, as a, a child that didn't allow me to, you know, go after my goals right away. I had to deal with some personal issues that, uh, you know, had to be complete before I could make a move forward. And but even as a, a very young child, if you look at a lot of my pictures, um, I'm always in suits and ties, and I, you know, I. It's something I just I have true love of the people and. I, and I think that anybody who knows me out there knows that I would take the shirt off my back to help somebody, and, and that's what I'm about. Well, one of the issues you're running on has to do with child molestation. Uh, I think what you're kind of referring to some is uh, you had, when you were a young guy, uh, you had some problems with Catholic priests, mm -hmm. and some of the issues you want is to go to Harrisburg and and make sure legislation gets passed Correct. for mandatory reporting things. Absolutely. Um, that is so important to me. Um, just seeing what happened in my situation and how many young boys this man affected and seeing how many other lives are affected through, and it's just not the Catholic priests. I mean, the Penn State thing was an absolute tra tragedy. Um, so, uh, I have to be the voice for children. I mean, when adults know what's going on, and they look the other way, and they really turn their back on the children of the state, um, I can promise you this, I will be the voice of children. I'm not afraid to stand up. I've dealt with this for 28 years. And when I see my own personal friends ending their own lives, um, Another boy who has eight multiple personalities, takes all kinds of medicines. Somebody has to stand up for him. Uh, even our own governor, Corbett, you know, involved in the, as attorney general, running for, uh, for governor. the governor office. You know, he took $200,000 in campaign funds from the second mobilization and knew what was going on and looked the other way. I will never, never be that person. You know, we're going to educate our children. We better protect our children. And uh, I'm going to be on the forefront of that measure. Talk about children in, in abusive situations. We also had the Kids for Cash scandal in Zern County, which basically grew out of the privatization of a juvenile 
detention facility, right. which here at Berks County, the county commissioners are now privatizing the juvenile mm -hmm. facility. And you know, th this all rose out of that in Luzerne County because the private company wanted to make more money. Right. They paid off the judges to send children there. And, and that's abusive kids too. Absolutely. What would you do in Harrisburg in, in terms of maybe fighting privatization efforts? We have to. I mean, no doubt. Um, it seems like that's another course that the governor is taking right now is trying to privatize everything, even our state lottery, which makes money for us. But again, you know, that we have to have the laws in place that are going to protect our children. Not all privatization is bad, but it seems like it's out of control now. The government, he wants to privatize everything. And when our kids are the most important thing in our lives, we need to have, again, the laws in place and protect them. And, you know, when you have corporations that, are, that all they are about is making money, you're absolutely right. You're going to have scandal. You're going to have, you know, people that, uh, they're going to be sending more kids into prison because the more kids they send in is the more money that prison is, or, um, well, it's putting private profit ahead of absolute public benefit. Right, and, public and, and we can't do that. It's just unacceptable in this day and age, and uh, we need to call those people out. There's been a lot going on in Harrisburg. A lot of bills, radical bills being pushed through the legislature and signed by the governor. Uh, voter ID is one. Uh, where do you stand on uh, you know, requiring people to have a state-issued identity card? Right. Um, number one, we're not far. This is in the devil state. Um, but, you know, I, I truly believe it's a waste of $4 million. We don't need to be spending $4 million on voter identification right now when we have so many other problems across the state. So, uh, of course, I'm going to vote no on that. I mean, it's just... And plus, I truly believe in my heart that it's, it's, it, it's a law from the Republican side that is specifically made to, you know, keep the poorest Democrats from voting and, and making sure that people that don't have licenses, that it makes it just that much diff difficult to vote. And this is an American right that every single American, unfortunately we all don't use that right, but the people who do should be restricted. Well, uh, I've been thinking about some of this again, you know, the past couple days and it occurred to me like there are many cultures who don't believe in getting the pictures taken. They think a, a camera steals her soul and things like this. Uh, the Amish culture, for one, here in Pennsylvania, they do not allow people to take their pictures. Um, is This good law could actually be a, an infringement of religious freedom, couldn't it? Absolutely. I mean, I didn't even think about it that way, but yes, absolutely. I mean, if, but again, uh, That, I, that is amazing. I didn't know that about yeah. Amish, that, you know, yeah. that that's the case. And that, you know, you're absolutely right. Yeah. And, but there are a lot of cultures around the world in this world, mm -hmm. pluralistic society. A lot of cultures around the world who don't believe in, in you know, having the pictures taken. Right, right. And that would be, that's a requirement for a photo ID. Right. Absolutely. Uh, and it's good for, as you said, on the individual right of the person. Yes. Uh, another issue that's been forefront in Harrisburg has been the attack on women's reproductive rights. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you've been endorsed by Planned Parenthood Pennsylvania PAC uh, because you're the only pro-choice candidate in this race for this seat. Yes, um, and I'm very happy to have their uh, endorsement. Uh, and I will stand up for women's rights 100%. Um, I'm, I'm currently married to my wife, Jacqueline, and I also have a 14-year-old daughter, and they are the most important things in my life. And um, I truly have a good woman by my side, and I believe that no man should ever make any decision for any woman, period. And I'll stay right by the side of women and fight for them uh, 100%. Another issue that you're you know, kind of at the forefront on is marriage equality. Absolutely. Um, I'm proud of that too as well. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a person who loves people, and I don't think that we need to uh, create hate. Uh, it's absolutely ridiculous in this day and age that, uh, you know, a man and a man or a woman and a woman could not be legally married in Pennsylvania. 
and, and, and share the same rights as everybody else that is married. Um, it's unacceptable in this day and age, and I think people are starting to turn and, and really see the, the truth with this. And, and you know, I, I think the more that we are accepting, the more that our community will become a true community. And, uh, you know, and that's what I'm about. I'm about bringing people together, not separating. You've made a, a significant personal commitment to this race. You put over $50,000 of yeah. your own money yes. into your campaign. Absolutely. Um, talk and some about one your thing, personal commitment to this district. One thing that I didn't want to do in this campaign is be bought. You know, I'm, I wasn't out there accepting big lobbyist money, um, going after anything that my vote would be sold. The people that I want to represent don't have any money. They can't give me the money to run this race. They already have paid every dime they possibly could to the government. So um, I'm willing to put up everything I have to go out there and represent the people of 126, and I'm proud of that. Um, I can't, you know, the seniors, they're overtaxed, you know, property taxes are killing them, you know. Those are the people I want to represent, and uh, I, I can't ask them for money. Um, speaking of money in politics and, and being bought, uh, the kind of the you know 800 pound gorilla in Berks County politics is State Representative Thomas Caldera. Yeah. He uh, has a large organization here. He's behind your chief opponent yes. in this primary. Yes. Uh, have you met with him? Has he offered you uh, to? Give you money or anything like that? No, no. Um, last time I saw Tom, we were at the committee meeting. We talked a little bit, um, but no, we haven't talked after that. Uh, you know, I know he's endorsing Frank, and I personally, I think Frank is a is a good guy. Unfortunately, um, you know, we need something different here in Berks County, and, and I think the people realize that that is me. That I'm not one of these politicians that is going to be bought. Um, or follow the line. Um, I'm about the people. Uh, you know, Representative Kelly Drone has a, a history of funding other campaigns and then expecting kind of obedience in Harrisburg right. on, on key votes and things. Right. Uh, have you met with him in his office? Um, I, I have met with him in his office. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't about my cam campaign. It was uh, actually about the child abuse issue that. Uh, we have discussed on several occasions, but yeah, I've been in his office. Have you seen any political campaign signs there? Um, I can't. I can't say for sure. But um, why do you ask? Well, I asking because I've seen political campaign signs in his office when I've been there. Is that right? And I'm just wondering how pervasive and an abuse of of that law he you know engages in in light of the bonus gate. Is that right? Is, are, are you not allowed to have signs in the no. office? No. Is that right? And you, you can't and, do any. And, and everything make, political you, campaign has to be separate from your state office. So you can't make case. phone calls out of the office for no. political campaign. Is that right? Okay. No. I did not know that. Yeah, I mean, state representatives are in prison for running the you know, political operations out of their state offices. Senator Jane Orry, you know, okay. uh, most recently. Uh, so, yeah, that's why I was asking that. You mentioned your, your chief opponent mm -hmm. is uh, Frank Dabaski in this race, former chief of staff to Reading Mayor Tom McMahon. Right. Uh, there have been things coming out of his campaign about you. Yes. Some vague rumors, uh, allegations, things like that. Sure. Uh, what's your reaction to the kind of campaign at least the people around Frank are, are conducting? Um. It, it really shows uh, the type of politics that go on here in, in Berks County, especially the city of Reading. It's somewhat disheartening is that um, you know some, they have to stoop low levels to try to run a good campaign. They should be worrying about their own campaign and not worry about Mark Rossi or, or his campaign. Um, one thing that I can promise the people of 126 is that we have stayed above it at 100% level every time. And we refuse to go down that road. The people of Berks County don't need it. The people of my district don't need it. And to be honest with you, I think uh, the state of Pennsylvania doesn't don't need it anymore. So, um, going to stay above all that. 
Let me ask you that. If, if a candidate runs a dishonest campaign, how can the voters expect him to be an honest legislator? Uh, I don't think, I think people see that clear nowadays. Uh, I don't think people look at it like they used to back in the day maybe and, and, and say, oh, maybe he is a good guy. No. Uh, I think the moment that a, a politician or a candidate decides to go negative, you pretty much realize one thing is that they're chasing, they're behind, and they're doing everything they can to stay alive at this point. It's unfortunate, no doubt, um, and it, it does happen. It is politics, I understand that, and I just wish them the best of luck with that. Okay. Another major issue facing the state is education. Uh, the governor has, has just slashed education funding from everything from you know, pre-kindergarten, uh, they're cutting you know, full day kindergartens back to half days. Uh, school districts are laying off thousands of teachers across the state, plus support personnel, even janitorial uh, people. Uh, higher education is just being slashed. Um, what do you see as solution? Uh, it is sad, first of all. Uh, our, our children are the most important thing in our lives. You know, and when we say that we're going to educate them and then we start cutting funding, especially for early childhood learning. I mean, that's when kids are learning how to read and that is the most important step of any child's life. And cutting programs at that age is just unacceptable for not only Pennsylvania, but any, across this nation. Um, so I, I can promise that I will be a voice for, for education, especially public education, and go that extra mile to fight the Harrisburg Republicans uh, against cutting education. Um, it's unacceptable. Would you support a, a tax on the uh, extraction of natural gas to be used uh, specifically for restoring uh, funds to education? Uh, that would definitely help in the process. Um, will it still be enough? I don't know. But yes, it is definitely a start. We definitely need to put, uh, implement some type of royalty tax on our fellowship. What other issues are important to you that you're keen on in this campaign? Um, very dear and, and close to my heart, small businesses. Um, they are the lifeblood of, of our community. We need to make sure that they're you know, starting new businesses. We need to make sure that we're not making them jump through hoops and taking an extra three, four, five, six months to be able to get the start up and operate. I mean, again, unacceptable. So um, infrastructure, we need to, again, whether it's through Marcellus Shale or closing the Delaware loophole, we need to start funding some type of transportation um, you know, system in our, in Berks County. Allentown is booming, Lancaster is booming. Why are we being left behind? And, and that's what I'm going to Harrisburg to find out. Why are we not getting the money here that everybody else is getting? So, you know, one thing we know is if we start investing in our roads, you know, fixing our bridges, making new roads, the 222 corridor at Maiden Creek, it's got to be fixed. I mean, that's a bottleneck. And not only does it hurt the transportation, but it's dangerous. People lose their lives on that road. Um, unacceptable. So, uh, those are a couple, two of my big key issues. Um, of course, public education, I want to fight for that. I also am going to be an advocate for children. Um, you know, like John said here, the, the, the mandatory reporting laws in Pennsylvania are weak. Um, if we truly say that we're going to protect them, then let's, let's follow through with the legislation that actually does this and then also educate our parents and our children because that would be our best prevention. What would you say to an undecided voter, uh, we're nine days out from the election, what do you say to a voter in this district who's undecided about for whom to vote? Why should they vote for Mark Rossi? Um, one thing I, I, I tell everybody, whether it's the first day I started or, or it's going to be the last day, is that um, I'm doing this for the right reasons. You know, my heart is in the right place on this. I am not out here for my own interests. I'm out here for the people, to give the people who need it the most the voice that they need. And I honestly believe that there's politicians out there that are holding our county back. And I, I just 
will speak from my heart and let them know how much I care about them and how much I care about my district. And, then I, and I promise them that I will be with them in their community all the time. Well, thank you. 